In this video, I pulled a head on a Volvo 850. It's a double overhead cam uh, motor. So I just wanted to show you uh, some of the positions of the cams and valves and uh, some of the other things that related to uh, heads, including information about burnt valves. And this is going to be, you know, the same with many cars, not only the Volvos. As an added treat, I decided to put the cam cover back on this head uh, to kind of demonstrate to you all uh, how the cams are aligned in the head and help you see how the valves open up on the bottom whenever the timing is aligned or the motor comes to a stop after you turn it off. Now if you look in this intake uh, manifold, these intake ports, man those things are filthy. Uh, I would guess that these people probably rarely used any uh, fuel injector cleaner and stuff like that. Uh, but it could be just a result of this head being on here for, I think this is 94 model. So this has been on here about 20 years. That could be 20 years worth of buildup. I didn't check the mileage on the car, but most of the mileages are off anyway. So after 20 years, the intake uh, ports look like this unless somehow you've been able to keep them clean with some kind of detergents. Now, this is what I call the fun part. Here is the piston area. This little circle around the valves. The uh, valves on this side are the intake valves. The valves down here with the brownish buildup on them are the exhaust valves. Now, the motor is in time. This is not where it, it shuts down at, but I'm going to try to slide this paper under there. Looks like the intake valve is closed and the exhaust valve is closed on number one. Number two, the uh, intake valve is open a little bit. Exhaust valve is closed. Number three, they're both closed. Number four, the intake valves are open a lot. And on number five, the exhaust valves are open a lot. So, let's say for instance, you shut this motor down. At any given time, this is probably going to be the percentage of your open and closed valve scenario. So here, we have two intake valves open. This one's cracked open, and this one's cracked open. And most of the exhaust valves are closed, except for number five. Now, none of these valves are damaged, but they all have some buildup on them and around them. If you use fuel injector cleaner, it may keep this area here a little cleaner and stop some of this uh, harsh stuff here for building up on the exhaust valves especially. The exhaust valves get a lot hotter than the intake valves. I think I remember somebody telling me the intake valves may get uh, four to 600 degrees while the exhaust valves during normal operation of the engine driving down the freeway probably get close to 1600 degrees while it's in operation. So usually if you have a valve burn, it's probably going to be an exhaust valve because they get a lot hotter than the intake valves. Now, I don't see any valves lifted up higher than these exhaust valves, and I'm going to turn one of the uh, cam sprockets to see if I could get one open more. But as you can see, that exhaust valve sticks out of the head a little bit while it's in its swing. And if the timing belt breaks and these cams still spin a little bit and those pistons are coming up, just about to the surface, that's how you get the uh, piston and valve contact and cause yourself to have bent and broken valves when you lose a timing belt. Okay, I turned these uh, cams around, the cam sprockets, and that's about as far open as those uh, valves get. So they do stick past the head surface a little bit. And I guess that piston comes up and makes a pretty tight seal on those uh, on this head to make it have a, an interference if the timing belt breaks. 
Okay, I turned the exhaust cam so that it's open at its most open point. So there you have it, the intake at its most open point and the exhaust at its most open point. And uh, that's as far as those things come open. So those pistons must come all the way up to this head in order for them to have contact. At the top of these valves, it has a stem that goes up. I'm gonna try to get one, but the valves are about that long and they have these little flat parts at the bottom. You know, you could stand them up on the ground or table or something and they have stems. These stems go up into the head to the top where they go through a seal that seals off that stem, but that stem has to stay lubricated so that the valve doesn't get too hot and it moves up and down smoothly. Now, there's a spring up on the top that pulls the valve closed when there's no pressure pushing it down from the lifter. So, let's say for instance, you're driving along, your valve stem seals are old, worn, and leaking, and while you're driving, a little bit of oil is getting past these seals and coming down into this area of the piston. Well, when the car fires, it burns that off. Well, if you have a lot of oil getting past them, all of them are leaking a little oil into this area. While you're idling, you may notice a little smoke coming out of the tailpipe. That's because oil is getting past the valve stem seals coming into the combustion area and getting burned off and going through your exhaust. Over the past few years, I've been scratching my head trying to figure out what causes burnt valves and that kind of thing, uh, mostly because of Volvo, these white blocks seem to have their share of them. For a while, I thought it may have been people using low quality fuel and uh, the low octane fuel. Then I learned about these valve stem seals leaking. I thought it might have been the valve stem seals leaking and that may be why you see all this black soot in these uh, uh, cylinder chambers. But uh, I met with a couple of mechanics and a couple of people that rebuild heads and they've pretty much got me convinced that it's because of uh, people not having good fuel mix between their fuel and air mix. All right, so there's five things needed to keep a car running. You gotta have fuel, you gotta have air, you gotta have timing, you gotta have compression, and you gotta have spark. Well, uh, from the guys I met with and talked to, they're pretty convinced that the thing that caused these valves to burn is the improper mixture of air and fuel. See, these exhaust valves, they may run at somewhere around 1600, 1700 degrees. The intake valves run cooler because they're pulling in cooler intake air. But uh, these exhaust valves, they get hotter and they're made of different harder material so they last a lot longer can take a lot more heat but if your fuel and air mixture is off and the car is not sparking properly and having this combustion properly it caused those valves to get hotter than normal instead of them running at the intakes at 1200 and the exhaust at 16 1700 the intakes may be running around uh, 14, 1500 and exhaust starts running around 17, 18, 1900 degrees and the hotter they run, the start to fatigue and then they just fell at the weakest point and they chip, crack and break apart and that's what's considered and called a burnt valve. So if you find out that your car is running rich or lean, you need to figure out uh, what's causing it and get it fixed either an intake manifold leak or a fuel injector not spraying properly or a fuel injector Spraying too much or leaking you got to get that figured out and fixed uh, So you don't burn a valve The best way to uh, figure out if your car is running rich or lean is to view the check engine light codes when you get a check engine light figure out that way 
You can also figure out by inspecting your park spark plugs when they're replaced. So anytime you get your spark plugs replaced, you might want to ask for them and take a look at them and compare them with uh, websites uh, that has that sell spark plugs like NGK or Champion or something like that. And you can look at the tips of them and tell if they're running rich or lean or have some other kind of fuel mixture problem. Now this is a cutaway view of the uh, overhead cam engine. You got your intake on one side, your exhaust on the other side, your valves going down through the air with the springs and the lifters. And uh, at the very top is your cams with the little tips on them. This is a picture of a burnt valve. Uh, see how it's just really a chip that's been taken out of the valve. And this is how a valve looks that's burnt and is still sitting in the head before you take it out of the motor. Now, your motor needs four or five things to run. It needs oxygen. It needs the spark. The spark plugs will sit pointing out of these holes. It needs fuel. Fuel is pumped in past the intake valves through the intake manifold. It needs compression and it needs perfect timing. Now, as you can see on number one and number three cylinders, the intake and exhaust valve is closed. While these are closed, the piston comes up and builds up the pressure, which is the compression. The fuel is already sprayed in there, then the spark plug ignites and sparks, causing the explosion that pushes the piston back down and creates that continuous force to keep the engine running smooth. Well, if you have a burnt valve down here on number five and it has a chip in it, whenever these valves are closed, and supposed to be sealed tight, you'll have a chip or a hole in it. And when the valves are in the closed position, this hole is letting air escape. The piston comes up. It does not build the compression that it needs to create the explosion, and you'll have a misfire. So if you have a, a burnt valve on number five or number three or whatever one you have, you'll have a misfire on that cylinder because that cylinder is not allowing the motor to build up the compression in that cylinder. You need to know if your valve stem seals are leaking. If you let your car sit and idle for several minutes, about five or ten minutes, and then you pump the gas, you'll know if those valve stem seals are leaking because your exhaust will blow out a puff of smoke. So you can let the car idle for five or ten minutes, rev the motor, Room, room, room! If you see a cloud of smoke, okay. now you can have those valve stem seals replaced by a professional. But what I recommend people doing, if you don't want to spend several hundred dollars getting those seals replaced, is uh, bump your oil up one notch. So if you're running 10W30, maybe go to 10W40, and that way less oil will get past those seals because it's a little thicker. Now, never exceed the recommended oil velocity in your owner's manual. Some owner's manual will have three different weights that you can use, so use the heavier weight recommended in your owner's manual. Another thing you could do to try to avoid uh, burnt valves is run fuel injector cleaner in the car every 90 days, or an I run it every 2,500 miles. So every 90 days or 2,500 miles, I fill up my gas tank, I put fuel injector cleaner in there to try to keep this area clean and these valves clean. Another thing I do is I rev the motor up while I'm driving. I don't try to drive like a somebody that's trying to pamper the car all the time. If you get the RPMs up over 3,000, Rumor has it that these valves will actually spin in their spots while you're driving. So if you're driving along and you, you want to go take off from a, a red light, go ahead and rev the motor up uh, over 2,500 or 3,000 RPM 
and these valves will spin around and that'll hopefully chip away any buildup that's trying to develop on the valve uh, tips. Another thing I recommend when trying to avoid uh, burnt valves is be very cautious when purchasing a car that has been sitting for an excessive period of time. Whenever a car has been sitting, those fuel injectors may be clogged up. They may not be spraying right. The gas that's in the tank is probably old and stale. Those are good combination of things to make a car run rich or lean. So if you test drive a car, uh, try to get that old gas out of it as soon as possible. Get it replaced with fresh gas and take it for a good spirited drive you know, at least 30 minutes to make sure that uh, you get the motor revved up, you get those valves spinning in there, and hopefully break off any buildup on the valves and clear out any fuel injectors. And, and if there's a problem with the fuel injectors running rich or lean, it should trigger a tra check engine light for you. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.